Welcome everyone, episode 299 Aussie Tech Heads are once again coming at you through your ears on the 19th of July, 2012. 19th of July, geez, it's going away fast. Well, what have we got tonight? Will, how are you going? Yes, I am. Thank you for asking. Good. Oh, well, well done. <laughs> now, now the, the other little fellow of the trio, he's not in tonight. He is, um, he's having a night off, busy at work. Poor baby. You got a boo-boo or something? Hmm. Yeah, I'll get a note from work. him. Why wouldn't an accountant be busy at work this time of year? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> that's, what, that's what he's saying anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just me and Will tonight. So, uh, so welcome, a welcome. Now, you can watch the live recording of the video at live.thesecrethub.com if you want. Thursday nights at around about 7.30. And uh, so tune on in. And what else, what else have we got going? We've got the lounge. The lounge is always there, chiping up and uh, giving us some uh, good advice and so forth as we run through the stories. The show notes, by the way, are always up on the web page before the show starts uh, at aussietechheads.com.au. And the uh, uh, video can be seen, pre or recorded video, is at video.aussietechheads.com.au. Uh, the paper, paper.aussietechheads.com.au. And um, another big thank you to all the overseas listeners, because I know you guys, you um, went a bit crazy this, this week. I don't know what we spoke about last week, but it must have tweaked someone's interest. And uh, <laughs> and uh, that's what else. What well, then? Brad and Tech Webcast, Howdy Doody, they, uh, broadcast, they rebroadcast on the Aussie Tech Head channel from seven o'clock every thursday night so tune in for the rebroadcast of them they're up to what 197 this week brad so you're nearly cracking the 200 well done well done well done well done all right will what have you been up to in the telstra uh, shop you've been telling me yeah uh, yeah yeah went to back to telstra got a uh an old haste um samsung that's been problems ever since we got them this is about the fourth time it's been back um it just it's a hardware issue. It just keeps shutting down. And, um, yeah, I got to Telstra and they decided that they couldn't figure out if I was still on contract or off contract or if I was under warranty or not. Or uh, An hour and a half later. You should have just got an iPhone 4. <laughs> so, well, yeah. the problem is if I'm still under warranty, it's $300 payout because I'm only just over my 12 months. So mm. I was going to upgrade my handset. Ham set. Your ham set. <laughs> Cooks your bacon in the morning. Um, <laughs> oh, nice. Green green eggs and ham sets. <laughs> but so that was that was painful. But um, yeah. Good. Got well, so you're, gonna, you're you're getting it uh, you're getting it uh, repaired. Is this right? Well, yeah. In the end, they, the man, the store manager just made a decision. He said, uh, "Look, that's it. Just." put it in for warranty repair mm. and uh, I'll deal with it if there's any issues. So so that was pretty cool. Mm, good stuff. Now, um, now this episode tonight is brought to you by Aussie Tech Heads Web Hosting and you can find the web hosting at hosting.aussietechheads.com.au. Now, look, I'm, I'm talking. I'm trying my hardest with the boys over there to try and get some good plans going. So we might get a little show discount or something, but, you know, I've got a lot of talking to do. My people talk to their people. And they get back to me, you know, all that sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah, but uh, the plans are great anyway. They're as cheap as you'll find anyway. So um, go and have a look. And it's Australian hosting, uh, not, but it's very quick in Australia, I should say. Yeah, it's a lot hosting. Of the, uh, the hosting are, are quite sluggish, but these do pretty well. Yeah, so this one, this one is really fast. They're hosted in Sydney, Australia, so it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, so look, uh, with everything, like, look, the, the monthly costs are, are, are very competitive. So you might look at them and say, oh, look, I don't get enough bandwidth or space or whatever. But, hey, just sit down and think about how much do you really going to need. And if you think you need more than what the, what plans are on the thing, uh, shoot me an email, glendozietechs.com.au or whatever, and uh, I'll tailor one for you. I like tailoring. I'll get the needle out. And I'll, I'll tailor one for you. So hosting.aussietechheads.com.au. Don't forget the Facebook page as well, facebook.com forward slash aussietechheads. Go, go along and like it. Um, I want to have a like-a-thon, see what happens. But uh, go on. <laughs> if you haven't liked it, go and like it and lick it while you're there as well. Uh, so now we're going to go on to a story. I was um, going to say quickly too, oh, yes. just remember that we've changed radio hosts. The new we hosts have. we have for our audio. Oh, is, it, is it up hosting. and running? Uh, it's mostly well. It's it's up and running. You, you're only going to hear like episode fifty of the den on loop, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's up and running. And 
hopefully now we're not going to have any of the audio problems we were having with the uh, the jittering and the the chipmunking. So that should all be fixed, and hopefully. Once we go live, it will actually go live. So, so you're, you're subjecting everyone to 24-7, Mark. Is this what you're telling me? It's not so much I'm <laughs> subjecting to. It's, it's okay, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, the, the, the next episode of The Den, which I think is episode 27, I think I'm going to be on. So that'll be a – so see what uh, interesting topics come up. Um, yeah, so, but anyway, yeah, Mark's still doing the den. He's, uh, he gets a group of musos and some other guys around or on Skype and, uh, yeah, goes to town on whatever topic comes to their brain at that point in time. And you can catch the, him on, uh, what, YouTube and iTunes, I think it is. So just type in the den on iTunes and in YouTube, I think he's youtube.com forward slash the Saltzer, S-A-L-T-Z-E-R, I think it is. So, um, go and have a look there. Now, uh, we better get into some stories. Because we don't want we don't want the night to get away from us, and so <laughs> that, that never happens. What are you talking about? <laughs> no. Now uh, there's one here. Look, uh, I'm not a I'm not a user of Drupal, but uh, there is a Drupal convention or a, a, a Drupal con in Sydney next year. Now you might be saying, "What the hell is Drupal?" Well, Drupal is like a content management web system, so just the same as Joomla, which the which our page is made out of or from a content management system. If you're looking to host a web page or make a web page, you can install Drupal. Now, the Drupal Association has announced that next year Australia will host the official DrupalCon. It's in February. It will be held in Coogee, 6th to the 9th of February. So um, go and book a room. Now, <laughs> who should attend? Well, anyone who wants to learn about open source Drupal, web developers, themers, site architects, blah, 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 web professionals, anyone working for an organisation that's adopted Drupal. And that's uh, government and a lot of organisations are adopting it. Look, I still think Joomla is the best, but um, I haven't actually put my fingers into Drupal, so look, I probably can't give you a, a fair comparison. But um, but yeah, look, Drupal, you can, you can install Drupal with, what, three clicks if you sign up with hosting with us. Uh, you go into the uh, into the back end and you just click on Drupal and it'll install into your web space and there so you go. So you can have a Drupal back end. That's good. You can. You can. <laughs> you can. You can, can be nice and Drupal. Uh, yeah, so that's there. So keep an eye out for that for all the little Drupal fans. And look, I've got a couple of Apple stories. Uh, again, it doesn't seem a week goes past without an Apple story. But the iPad is being released into China. Uh, when's that? This week. This week coming. So, but however, it's not going to be a line up and uh, wait and see what happens. You're going to have to reserve it. So that apparently there was a bit <laughs> of trouble last January when the iPhone 4S was launched. There are ugly scenes when hundreds of customers waited outside Beijing's Apple store in the San Litton district, only to be told later the store would not open. Apple gave no explanation. So now that that's got to suck. So in response. <laughs> An outraged customer began throwing eggs. Why would you have eggs in a line at an Apple store? I don't know. But anyway, she did, or they did, he did, um, which later led to a scuffle with security guards. Apple then said it would temporarily suspend the iPhone 4S sales. Hmm. Apple's Beijing store in the San Litton district was previously the site of another skirmish relating to the sale of a white iPhone 4. Customers broke the store's glass door. Naughty, naughty. Um... Yeah, so now uh, what's going to happen is you're going to have to have a reservation. So between 9 and 12 p.m. local time, starting on Thursday, which is probably today in China, the, the stores can accept a limited amount of reservations each day and customers who fail to receive one will have to try again another day. There you go. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. Look, Sorry, I, I suppose I should have been listening, but I wasn't. <laughs> oh, look, that's all right. Um, uh, I've got a graphic just for those, somewhere. Uh, who are listening? I've literally just walked in the door, thrown uh, Google Hangouts on, and I'm slowly <laughs> trying to play catch up. So I'm getting there. You're all right, Will. I'll keep going then. I'll keep going. Maybe maybe this story will interest you. <laughs> uh, oh, here's one. Here's one for Eric. It's a shame Eric's not in tonight. But the Qantas ditches of the BlackBerry for the iPhone. Another. How many more <laughs> nails? How many more sucker punches can Rim take? But then again, there's it's actually. There's, I was, uh, when I was in the Tesla shop today, they've still got two new Blackberries, one $60 a month and one $70 a month. Yeah, oh, sweet as. <laughs> but they reckon... <laughs> Which is $20, $20 dearer than any other phone. They reckon that they're still, <laughs> uh, in some July report that the boss in RIM 
you know, wrote or something. He goes, oh, we've still got 78 million users worldwide. But uh, that, that, hello, have a look at yourself. That is decreasing, I think. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, uh, Qantas, yeah, they're, they've reportedly, so reportedly ditched its fleet of 1,300 BlackBerry smartphones for iPhones. There's been a strong demand from Qantas employees for the iPhone, with a large majority of respondents to a recent survey indicating that this is their preferred smartphone, the airline's CIO, Paul Jones, told the Australian. So uh, there you go. BlackBerry 10 is coming out next year. So it needs to be front and centre of a business with a flagship device. That's what that's what's been that's what's a bit lacking at the moment. When BlackBerry 10 comes out, we'll see. What? No, I don't know. It could be a game <laughs> chart. It's just it a was ramble. Using BlackBerry to write the article, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> probably. It's just a, it's just a, it's a ramble. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah. So anyway, um, the the problem with the BlackBerry 10 coming out, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, yeah, too late. The iPhone 5 is going to come out, and then this BlackBerry 10 is going to come out after the iPhone 5. It's uh, that they, they should have had probably launched that eye for mine probably the before, <coughs> before. But it, yeah, I mean, it is quite funny too. Like you look at like Nokia, they still have, you know, I was looking today, you can still buy a $40, you can buy a $40 phone now, buy it outright on a prepaid locked network. So Telstra or Virgin or whoever. And it's got a five megapixel camera, you know, me- uh, media player. It's running Symbian OS, you know, mm. and they're 40 bucks. So, I mean, <laughs> they used to be flagship phones. What, yeah. three years ago? Four years ago? Yeah, look, it's just, uh, it's not happening for them, is it? It just <laughs> it doesn't happen. I think, well, they've got their own app store. They're so, yeah. but... Um, well, they need it, but... There's not there's not much know. going on in there either. There's no point having an app store if you've got nobody developing for it. No, that's right. That's right. And I think, <laughs> but what do you do as a company? What do you do? Like, you've, you've got to survive. You've got to do your best to survive. You'd, you can't just pack diversify. up. No, mm-hmm. you don't... You, the biggest problem is any and all major corporations, no matter who they are, suffer from this with possibly a couple of exceptions. As the industry and the the people who know, basically, as they demand different things, you need to give it to them. The problem is major corporations don't turn on a dime. They take years to reassess the situation. The problem is the situation they reassess is five years old. So... Mm, you know, that's, with, that's basically what's happened to to a lot of the companies. They just weren't quick enough to react, and now they're playing catch up, which you can't afford to do these days. No, so yeah, but I know because when the iPhone four, well, no, when the iPhone came out, well, it it just changed the landscape completely straight away. You know, iPod, GPS, everything in the one device. That was good. Um, yeah, but anyway, yeah, well, that's it. That's enough about BlackBerry. And uh, oh, I, I, speaking of um, of mobile phones, um, sorry, I'm just trying to adjust my levels because apparently I no, keep you're right. That, that up. was me. I turned you up. Oh, okay. I just turned you down. <laughs> um, Is it better now? We're going to run out of. You know how in Australia for our overseas listeners, um, if you want to ring Australia, you ring six one four for mm. our mobiles, but our mobile numbers start with 04. Um, apparently, we're going to run out of 04 numbers. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, about 24.5 million numbers were registered in 2011 alone. Um, so, obviously, there's only so many combinations you can have with an eight digit yeah. you know, combination. Yeah. Um, so, on the upside, we're probably not going to run out until 2017. Well, that's all right. <laughs> but still. But it's. It, what they're not sure about is they're not sure they're in the ACMA or whatever it is the um, uh, the Australian con- consumer whatever they are Media um, mobile thingy basically the the issue they're having now is what they're going to replace O four with mm. because you know O two is Sydney O what O seven's Brisbane or O two is New South Wales O seven's Queensland. Oh, eights South Australia or something. So all yeah. the states already have the, yeah. an assignment. So. Right. so, yeah, so it's the Australian Communication and Media Authority 
They're um yeah. So as Will says, the the O five. That'll be strange, won't it? When you start seeing an O five number, you're going O five four two or something. You're going wow. Um yeah, but yeah. yeah. So but yeah. So this uh this geographic sectors is what they what they're doing as well. But um, they're going to remove these geographic sectors. So no, remember in the old days, you know, you could look up in the paper for something for sale, or you could uh, say what's your phone number, and you'd say okay, it's five five seven three. You know, <laughs> oh, well, you must be from say Burley Heads yeah. or you'd go oh no that's not, right. mine's 5599 oh you must be from uh, Labrador well that's apparently just all going out the window so I don't know why the it might get hard oh for okay us. that'll be interesting so it's not like totally just going to be hell for leather across Australia but um, these numbers uh, so an example prior to the change the ACMA may have allocated numbers with the prefix 0299 in Sydney's north sector these numbers could then be issued to customers in this area following the change these same numbers can now be allocated across a broader geographic area anywhere in the Sydney Standard Zone unit SZU <laughs> the Sydney Standard Zone Is that, unit and num- that would be a lot That'd be the same zone that classifies as a local call, wouldn't it? Well, I'd imagine so, yeah. And numbers could be issued to customers in the same geographic area. They yes said you. So, uh, yeah, so so I think, you know, before you could say, okay, if you're in Sydney, you'd go 029953, you know, oh, yeah, that's over at bloody North Sydney somewhere. Or, But now, Mm. it could after this all happens, who knows? Your guess is mine. I remember when they added the extra digits because I remember in Lismore, with its, which is northern New South Wales, used to be, um, well, now it's 026622 yeah. something. It used to be just 0222. So they used to have short phone numbers and then all of a sudden they put these six sixes in it. Now it's been in since for probably 20 20 yeah, wow. nearly 25 but, years but wasn't it but, in Lismore though wasn't it it was 066 wasn't it and then it went to no, 0- no, it was 0- no no the 66 is new oh, the, right. they added the 66 it used to be okay. just 223 like my my grandma's old number used to be 223137 yeah. and now it's 66 or before she died <laughs> it's probably not now you could ring 6622313 and see what you get. Oh. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, they added the 66 and they probably did it about 25 years ago. The funny thing is you drive around Lismore and you see all the old buildings and they still don't have the 66 on them. They're oh, you know, yeah. fully functioning businesses yeah. that still don't have the 66 and this is 25 years later. <laughs> Now, um, now, so PA in the in the chat room is just asking if you got your PayPal here, and that's led me into a story because I got mine through the week. We had this discussion last week, didn't we? I think um, mine came through the week, and look, I'll show it to you on my iPad. It's a little device it sits on the top in the in the little thing there, and you swipe your card through it. Now, so far, so good, I suppose. Now, the that just plugs into the. Headphone jack, Head, doesn't it? Just headphone jack. That's right. Yep. Just to hold it. Yes. Yes. Now the experiences that I've uh, had, I suppose, now getting this. Um, now PA, he's in the, he's a listener in the in the chat room tonight in the lounge. He had similar issues, and I suppose everyone will. It's the way that, to do it. Uh, I think when he used it, when he is subscribed to it a, f- a month or so ago. Uh, there was a lot of paperwork that he had to send off, like a snail mail, uh, copies of ID and all this sort of stuff. But uh, when I did it, all the ID was uploaded. So I scanned it and uploaded it. You can still fax it if you wanted to, but um, I just wanted to scan it and upload. Look, I think I did that. I got my uh, my welcome message what, Friday. I scanned and uploaded. They rang me. They froze. They freeze your account as well while you're going through this verification process. <laughs> so your account, That's handy. Yeah, your account's frozen. And so then had the call and asked me all these questions. How much am I going to put through it and all this sort of stuff? Which I said, well, how do I know? I haven't got it yet. So <laughs> you know, we'll see how we run. See how, we'll see how we roll. And so anyway, so obviously I was accepted. The thing turns up Monday morning. So pretty good turnaround. And account was unsuspended and ready to rock and roll. But, uh, but another issue, I suppose, is that they actually now freeze the funds for 21 days. So they the oh they, really yeah so you can't get your funds out uh, for twenty one days as far that's as far as I can see I'm not sure if there's any limits to all this sort of stuff I I can't tell you offhand but I think what you put through it in your PayPal account is, has to stay there for twenty one days just in case there's issues I, I guess I imagine 
I can't see why they're, they'd have to operate, be made to operate under different rules than the, the banks and the FPOS and the, you know, all their credit card sort of rules. But anyway, that's the way that they're doing it. So, <laughs> oh no, PA is just clarified, only the funds via PayPal here are frozen for 21 days. So just the ones you want. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but, um, but, but look, I'll, I'll put it in there and I've done a test swipe and all this sort of stuff. And look, I'll tell you something for nothing. It's the PayPal here accesses your information from PayPal, I would say, oh, 30 times faster than what it does over the over the web, off a web page. <laughs> so I'm not sure what's going on with that. But because, you know, when you jump into PayPal, you'd sit there all night waiting for the thing to load up. And uh, slight exaggeration, but, you know, it's a, it seems what is a while. But, um, it's horrible. Pa- the PayPal gateways are so nasty. Yeah, and but with this thing, like, you know, you t- I can... Hang on, I'll just, I'll just turn mine on. I'll go... There now. Let me go to. I'll see how long it takes to boot up and give me a balance. So I've opened, pushed open the app now, and it's loading, 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 loading. And while you're loading, I've got to put my password in. While you're waiting for that, that um, actual card reader is it Bluetooth or? No, it's, it's a plug-in. Is that what you're, and and then oh, so it actually uses the. I've got me balance already. Headphone socket. Yeah, it uses the headphone socket. Oh, okay. In there. Hmm. I just thought it was using that for power. I didn't realise it was actually communicating through that. Oh, I guess it is. Oh, I'm going into that far. I just thought it was communicating through that. I don't know. PA I just thought it would, have been, would have thought it would be Bluetooth or something. Oh, I don't know. I thought it was just all through that. Let me have a look. Let me pull this thing out. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, yeah. Look, it's got three little plugs on it. So, it's yeah, it's... Uh, well, it must actually be using, like, the old style... Um, you know, like what's it called? iPod Digital headphone audio, things. sort of analog audio. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. And uh, PA's further clarified is uh, it's it is it is using the volume, and you must have your volume up. So there you go. It must be an old yeah, an old modem screech into it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, How, okay. So. That's secure. That's good to know. <laughs> yeah, be right. And uh, yeah, well. But anyway, look, it seems to work. So now well, when you're out and about, you can take a credit card off someone. Diners, credit card. Mm. And I think the fee is 2.7% plus 30 cents for each sale. So no, that's, that's right. Just add it to your bill and call it a carbon tax. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, yeah, so look at that. That's, um, yeah, it's, it's going to work. So that's good. And, um, yeah, we'll test it out. And I'll, I'll, I've gone black and no, white. No, that should be good. No, I've come back. You've gone black and white. You're... Uh, I mean, yeah, that's interference. Chroma, chroma keying the wrong thing. <laughs> no, nah, it's because when I put my hand close to the camera, I blocked a bit of light out. Did I? Never to be seen again. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I can't do it now. But anyway. Oh, well. Yeah, so anyway, PayPal can... here is here. Hmm. Um, yes. That'll be good. I'm waiting for mine. I've actually sent them an email and said, what's going on? Where's mine? Um, and they said, you're... The application number that I that they gave me to provide for help uh, doesn't exist, so that's good. So Sweet. I've got to do mine again. <laughs> <laughs> you love it. Now Australia going back onto some broad. Oh, let's do. There's one here. Uh, while we're doing PayPal, here's I've got another little FPOS story. Here we go. Well, I've got a a oh, internet one, which is I guess is related. Just quickly, uh, Australia's gets the low band uh, broadband ranking um, according to the international broadband report basically says that Australia is 21st of 34 nations for fixed broadband um, basically we have 24.6 of Australians are connected to a fixed broadband yeah okay um, right with although we have a 74% connection of wireless so like mobile broadbands um and of course conroy get on the act and said hey guess what this just proves that we need the nbn um you know well, so now yeah i was gonna say you know you've got places over like switzerland who has got the highest number of fixed broadband subscribers so per 100 mm-hmm. they got 39.9 but when you but when they say but you know when you say that yeah but, like, how, but did you see Korea? Korea top the mobile wireless broadband with a hundred point six 
percent. Mm. Well, yeah, <laughs> so there's a, yeah. so basically every subscriber has one point zero zero, you know, one or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. devices. <laughs> but but when you look at okay, you you probably would expect that the mobile subscription would be higher because that's an individual thing. Whereas the fixed broadband is to the home, you would imagine. So you know there could be four people. Work. Like, but yeah, that'll incorporate work or the workplaces too, surely. Yeah, yeah. You know those Koreans, there's more than four of them in the house. So, <laughs> you know. There's more than four houses in a house. <laughs> yeah, you got granny and great granny and great, great, great granny. <laughs> got it all, a lot of greatness going on. But uh, yeah, so Korea's going all right. So, But they're only a small little place, you know. Now that'd be, have to be South Korea. That wouldn't be North Korea. They're poor as. They probably don't even well, get the podcast. It's probably, it just says Korea, so it's probably... Well, you think about it. If that's all of Korea and you basically split that in half, it basically means that every person in South Korea has two connections. Yeah, no, it'd be South Korea. They just probably didn't stipulate it. I don't think nothing goes on in North Korea. They're not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> They're not allowed. No, I'm serious. What is it? Like China or something? Yeah, he's got that uh, Wang Chang Dung. He doesn't do anything. He's just, he's, he's, whatever he does, he doesn't do it. He's about to drop a nuke in your lounge room. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, getting back to me, getting back to me, little story about the thingos, F posses and stuff. Uh, I had one about the Commonwealth Bank. Here we go. Commonwealth, Commonwealth Bank is betting that an F POS terminal that looks like a tablet is all going to be all the rage. So um, the bank plans to release a wireless Android-powered console called Albert to replace traditional FPICE devices in quarter two next year. ComBank said it was ready to announce pricing, however, uh, said that Albert's unit cost is around 700 Woo! Um, but that's not official, but it's, more, but it's no more expensive than existing terminals, and the software is effectively free at the moment. So... Be all right, I suppose. It's obviously the way it's going to go. Like oh, they look pretty funky. There's no more down there. Yeah, they look pretty funky. So um. Yeah, I think they'll, they'll probably get stolen. But yeah. Yeah, well, that's the other problem. <laughs> but anyway, look out for those if you're a CBA merchant. You might be able to get your little hands on one. Uh, oh, just a quickie Skype. What happened to Skype? The Skype oh, is, yeah. Skype, uh, you send a message to someone, and guess what? It didn't go. It doesn't go. It goes to someone else. So the issue is over at Skype. Apparently, they've released a fix uh, today, yesterday. That's, uh, the fix is out, so download it if you've got Windows. If you've got Mac, bad luck. There's no fix yet. So according to Skype... <laughs> what the, a surprise. <laughs> the problem only arises in rare circumstances. Maybe Microsoft do this just to, to irk Apple, you know? Oh, we're yeah, probably. Fix that one. The floor affected... Um, up, oh, yep. You're right. I was no, just going right. to say, the floor affected updated Skype versions 5.1 for Windows, 5.8 for Mac, and 4.0 for Linux, and 1.2 for Windows iPhone. Oh, what do you got there, Will? Um, just in the chat room, um, Frosty and PA talking, oh, sorry, Chalks is talking about watching the stream on mobile, on Android. I'm using the Skyfire browser there, and uh, it's perfect quality. Uh, it's also working on Dolphin HD and Chrome. So, although PA just said it wasn't working on Chrome, so I just tried it and it was. So, I'm not sure what's going on there. Mm, who knows? Um, but so, yeah. uh, but what 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 browser are you using on your Android? Well, I just tried. Uh, I depends on my tablet. Um, I use Chrome because Chrome won't install on this. It's too old. But on this one, I use mainly Skyfire and Dolphin are the main two I use. Oh, okay. Nice work. So. That, that's a big head there, Will. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I think it's something to do with Flash implementation. Um, right. It's really strange. It It works. The stream works on my tablet, which isn't in here, otherwise I'd show you. It works on one of them, but not on the other one. So, I honestly don't know what the deal is. Mm. That's all right. <laughs> now, look, I suppose, big news, I suppose, if, if you want to call it that, but Windows 8 launch date has been announced. Uh, Friday, October 26th. So, not long to go. Windows 8, uh, I've got it on my laptop. 
don't use it too much. But um, look, so far so good, you know. But uh, so October 26th is also significant to users now running XP Vista or Windows 7 as it marks the debut of the 39.99 upgrade to Windows 8, which is a dramatic discount from other Windows upgrades. All users who upgrade will receive Windows 8 Pro, which is the more advanced of the two retail versions. Uh, so I guess you'd want to be doing that. Well, well, I suppose what you could do is you could go and uh, if you if you want Windows 8 but you can't afford 40 bucks. Well, you could probably go and try and score a copy of old XP off eBay for maybe twenty, and then you'd be able to spend forty and get the, the get the upgrade. You watch how quick that's going. Old copies of Windows going to go up. Well, yeah, probably. Well, I've got Vista. Maybe I should put mine on. I've got three of them. God help me. What have I did? What? Have, why did I get three? <laughs> Anyone want Vista? Give me an email. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, XP and Vista, no Office 2013. The new Office will work with Windows 7 and Windows 8, uh, Microsoft said. It will not work on Vista or XP, which is surprising. Vista. Vista is surprising. But anyway, it's because it's uh, pretty much the same architecture and, you know, guts of the Windows, the Vista. Like, that was the main, that was the, the when it first changed. Sort of thing. The omission of the two operating systems means that more than half of, half of all Windows computers, 54.6%, now in place, will not be able to upgrade. Because there's, remember, I think from a couple of weeks ago, we were saying that there was a, a big majority of computers still out there, I think, are still XP. And Windows 7 has just has probably eclipsed it just by now. But um, yeah. But Vista peaked. How's this? Vista peaked at a share of 19.1% in 2009. <laughs> pretty, pretty poor, isn't it? Um, oh, and it still I represents... spent so much money on that. Yeah, but, but it had to happen. Like, they couldn't have had Windows 7 without Vista. They had to... They, oh, had they to, could have given it a decent shot. <laughs> I suppose. But they, but they rebuilt everything. They rebuilt the whole, yeah. the whole thing. So I suppose it had to happen. But, uh, but I mean... They supposedly rebuilt everything for Windows Vista too, but you know, I guess they did it wrong. Mm. Well, yeah, but uh, so Vista still represents seven percent of all current Windows installs. That seven percent's people who bought a system with Vista on it and don't know how to get rid of it. That's basically mm. what that seven percent is, because it's not businesses because they never implemented it. And it's not the average user who went out and bought it and went, huh, I shouldn't have done that because they took it off. So it would have to have been the people who bought the HPs and the compacts and the Dells and stuff yeah, um, that had it preloaded and maybe some laptops that had it preloaded. But that's going to um, cause another drama, isn't it, really, like with this $40 upgrade. Like everyone's going to do it, right? Every, yeah. like, it's going to be popular. Everyone's going to do it. They're going to get home. It won't probably work properly you know what i mean like how many times has an upgrade of one version worked on over another version you know you normally the only, upgrade, the only upgrade as far as i'm aware that actually worked was the windows 3.1 to the windows 95 upgrade that was the only, that was the only one that actually worked properly <laughs> you might um, be right there yeah i remember actually big articles coming out about people who had vista there was an upgrade available but there was even microsoft said we recommend you don't Upgrade it. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, so, there you go. There you go. But, yeah, so it, it's a bit crazy. It's a bit crazy. But, anyway, that's the way they want to do it. Uh, yes, yeah, so, and Vista, meanwhile, will not run the upcoming IE10 either. Ooh. So, <laughs> if you're on Vista, <laughs> you've you got to move on. And if you're on XP, Chalkster, get a... I've still got XP. Get a boot up I've still here. got XP on my little Asus netbook. Yeah, yeah it, it yeah. goes all right. I don't think, I think this house is XP free. We're in an XP free zone. Although I've got a copy of it in the in the bookshelf, but we're in an XP free zone. Yes, entirely. Yeah, yeah. no, I think. Um, Which doesn't matter to me either way. Still, it was all right. Actually, my media center is still XP as well. Oh, yeah, no, mine, I've got a, the, oh, geez, hope they're not changing that again. Oh, they'll change all that. They'll change all the formats. They'll change everything. Great, can't wait. You know what they like. <laughs> You That's why, and I recommend this to people who have a little bit of time and don't mind educating themselves, I really recommend people run 
XBMC or something like that on the Linux platform if they're really serious about doing a media center. I mean, it does much more than that. It's a full home automations thing, but um, because it, using open standards and, and you know, it, it's not proprietary. It's all freely available. So if they do upgrade it or they do change it, it's still going to work. Mm. Now, um, yeah, that's right. Uh, okay. Now, although speaking to media centers, now there's something that I did the other day, which I was surprised. I'm not sure if we covered this or not, but you know, our old, our old mate Boxy. Well, hmm. they don't do a Windows edition anymore. Nope. No. That's I why went we to stop talking about it. Yeah, I went to update it. I thought, oh, I might update Boxy. It's been a while because it's still on the media center. It still works. But, um, yeah, because I got the remote for the iPad so I could use the media center and there was an issue with it and it wasn't working properly. I thought, oh, I'll just update the Boxy then. I couldn't find it, could I? And that's because it's not there anymore, is it? So, mm -hmm. I don't know. Why would they do that, Will? That Boxy was great. I loved it. I think just the same reason that a lot of, you know, like uh, iOS only runs on, you know, Mac. So, I think it was a hardware thing. The amount of different varieties of hardware they had to support was was cause, causing a lot of issues because it would work on one computer and not on another one. So, Boxy still is available on um, a lot of the well, obviously the boxy box is still available and there's actually a couple of other set top media centers that are available with it on it mm. um, but yeah I think that's what they're focusing on now because they had compatibility issues and it was taking more effort on their behalf to solve those issues and wasn't allowing them to move forward so mm. okay well I suppose they they got to do what they got to do but oh, I don't know I quite liked it I'm going to have to look for something else now to watch me YouTube. You reckon? XBMC's, XBMC's, I mean, probably not the best, but certainly the, the most versatile, um, the most configurable, and one of them, you know. Can I watch YouTube said, on it? Yeah, you can do every, absolutely everything on it. Um, it's fully configurable. You can even get X, X10 units and you can use it to turn your lights on and off and you can fully automate your house if you want to. Yeah, right. That's how advanced it is. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. Well, all your remotes, your remotes will work with it, your Windows remotes and whatever, they'll all work with it. Oh, okay. Well, I've got to do something because I, I need my YouTube. But, <clears throat> but I don't know, it's still working anyway. Um, so... <laughs> going to YouTube.com. <laughs> yeah, on the telly. Do you know what this is? So... This it's it's happy birthday Intel. Eighteenth of July, mm. nineteen sixty eight was founded in Santa Clara, C California. Today, the company is the largest semiconductor chip maker in the world, with over eighty thousand employees across the globe, and a two thousand and eleven net revenue of fifty four billion. Crazy, eh? Fifty four yeah. billion. But anyway. But do they, do they actually, I thought they outsourced. I mean, I know they, well, I guess they probably own the companies they outsource to make the chips and stuff. Mm. Anyway, good on them. Like, I know. Does it show you the first Intel PC? Oh, I doubt it. No, there's not that many pictures here. <laughs> you know what They had watches. Is, Intel moved you know into jewelry. Uh, they made watches in 1972. 1972. Oh, okay. Watches. <laughs> How's that? Um, could you overclock them? Wow. <laughs> oh, no, they were digital. <laughs> um, just something too. I noticed I was flicking through my Facebook uh, earlier tonight and Lasso has relaunched the Furbies. The what? <laughs> Remember the Furbies? No. Am I missing something? They uh, little furry creatures that used to, you know, God. Say random things. Right, um, okay. Yeah, so they've, <laughs> they've released the Furbies now, so Have you they're re-releasing them just in case you didn't get enough of them 15 years ago when they first came out. Have you got one, Will? <laughs> come on now. Uh, I, actually, the first time they came out, I did, yeah. I got a Furby. Yeah, um, yeah right. I, can't, but, I don't uh, think I've even remember them. They must have remember, been... Oh, you'd, you'd have to remember the Furby, surely. Oh, well, I'm probably older than you, so I probably missed that part. Did you? Well, do you remember the um, 
uh, Tamagotchis. Yeah, I was too old for them. Yeah. It was the same time, about the same time as that. I remember the Wombles. Is that the <laughs> same? BBC. Yeah, is that the same thing? <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe here's not. The, uh, here we go, here's a Furby. Yeah, Gremlins, uh, they do too, Frosty. Gremlins, you're right. Oops. Oops, what have I done? Not great, now I've broken it. Obviously, a little bit of the um, attitude and everything, too. Loves to get pet. Wow. Oh, jeez. Anyway, good on you. Furbies. Furby, Furby. I think the dog will attack one of those if I had that here. Um, All right, now, here's something you probably won't see every day. Apple has to publish an apology to Samsung on their website and in the newspaper. So did you hear about that one, William? Uh, under the order from the UK High Court Judge Colin Burrs, who has said that the the Samsung Galaxy tablet didn't look anything like the Apple iPad because the um, tablet, the Galaxy, wasn't as cool. Um, anyway, that was him. That's but right. He uh, he has made Apple. Or Apple will be forced to publish details of its lo- if it, of its key loss in a patent battle. Apple will be forced to publish details of its loss yeah, in the patent battle, blah, 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 on on its website. Apple must also take out and pay for notices published in the Financial Times, the Daily Mail, as well as the Guardian's mobile magazine and T3. They're obviously all overseas there. Uh, Samsung said that should Apple continue to make excessive legal, legal claims based on as such generic designs, innovation in the industry could be harmed and consumer choice unduly limited. So not surprisingly... Uh, Apple's appealing, and um, but I think look, Samsung's right. Look, they're, they're not, you know, they're not shy of their own legal spats and patent suits. But I mean, something as generic as just the look. The iPad is a very basic look, isn't it? Like they wanted, did they want Samsung? Yeah, the, that's right. Yeah, you know, like it reminds me I don't of know what they wanted to do. It must be thirty years ago now, or well, probably thirty-five years ago, maybe forty years ago before I was born, even maybe. No, uh, no, probably not quite. But when um, I think it was when Windows released the mouse or something on their operating system, I can't remember the story exactly. It was years ago. I read it, but Apple basically took them to court and said that, "Hang on, you can't say you're the first to have it because we've had it for like five years." And at the time, Apple was this little company that had like you know three people and two bad haircuts, um, and they said to Microsoft, "Well." They won the court case and the judge said, well, what do you want to do? And uh, Apple just said, oh, we just want a one-page apology in every newspaper in the world. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it, all it said was, we're, ap- we're sorry, Apple. That's all it said in little tiny writing in the middle of the page, yeah. every newspaper in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. that must have cost them a fortune. Yeah, well, I guess so. I suppose. Yeah, well, Apple did. Well, they probably needed the money back then. But uh, Apple's also uh, they've all, remember this price, the price war. The why? Why are we paying more in Australia for software yes. and goods in general? Well, the inquiry has has been happening while we've been sleeping. Uh, Apple has been granted a secret closed door hearing with the politicians in Canberra in lieu of a public submission. Oh, come on. The Australian Financial Review reported the secret meeting. Apple refused to comment on why it had declined to make a public submission. Microsoft made one. And it goes like this. Uh, So Microsoft blames Australia's comparatively expensive market, citing the inclusion of the GST as a point of differentiation, as well as higher labour, rent, marketing, training, supply chain and transport costs. Online for a reason yet bunch of tosses. I suppose, look, they do have a a presence (laughs) in Australia, so they could probably, you know, um, push it all around and blah, blah, blah. But uh, look, what I can't see is, yeah, like, yeah, I'm probably with you, though. Like, with software, it (laughs) it should be the same. People just buy it from the uh, overseas, so it doesn't make much difference. It's, you know, it's just, it's purely... Revenue raising, that's all it is. I remember when um, the new Office came out and Microsoft said we're not doing a 
student version. We're not reducing the price for students because Australia have a um, student rebate where eligible students can get a rebate on the price, which will bring it back down to the price it would have been if they had given the discount. The problem is there was something like 10% of students were actually eligible for that rebate. Yeah, so, right. you know, and well, nobody bought it. No. <laughs> they couldn't figure out why. So Microsoft has also passed the buck onto the, its reseller partners, stating it does not set the final retail price. Well, you know, I don't know. But, I suppose, but this is retail as in, like, well, I suppose if it's software, maybe the Australian arm has a has a say in it because they've got their rent to pay and I suppose the software must be contributed yeah, no, or attributed really because to them. I can go into Officeworks and buy, let's say I want to buy Windows 7 Ultimate, I can actually buy it cheaper in Officeworks than I can buy it from Microsoft online. It's $10 cheaper at Officeworks at the moment. Yeah, but sometimes so, that, that you'll find that uh, when there's a recommended retail price is set, that the maker, like Microsoft, they probably won't deviate from that price. And because otherwise, because Officeworks probably has a special, so I'd say it's so look, that, that they stick and hold, the manufacturer would stick and hold to the RRP just so the resellers don't get all crazy about it. Because if Microsoft offered it for, you know, 50 bucks cheaper than what the resellers could sell it for, like Officeworks, well... They're not going to stock it. Yeah, but they wouldn't need to. That's the thing. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> um, but it also, yeah, passed the buck, blah, 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 blah. Uh, also said, oh, there's got extended warranties included in the price, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, so obviously Microsoft having a big cry, and that's probably why Apple went to the corner and cried and hid. Um, Australian software developer Applied PC Systems owner Phil Best blamed the GST for higher local prices. He said a he, he said a customer's Australian address automatically made his company software ten percent more expensive. Australian customers do not pay GST when they download and purchase software from overseas. However, they they purchase our software. Either they or we have to pay the GST. T. So that in that situation, yeah, that probably sucks a bit, um, because like, yes, yeah, so if we buy software from overseas, we're not paying the GST. But uh, if someone was to buy software and they were overseas buying it from these guys, well, then they would have to pay a GST. So I think that yeah, that must be right. But, but that, uh, yeah, no, he just he, no. but they're still gonna pay. Uh, well, he's selling it, so he still yeah. if he sells it, he's got to pay the GST. But he was he went on to say. That he, he might as well just set up a, a server in Bali and trade out of Bali with the software. And I'm thinking, well, hello, why not? Why haven't you been mm. doing this? Like, well, you know, if your software is going to be more ten percent more competitive by doing it, like you'd be a bit of a numbskull, wouldn't you? Really? The, uh, see, retailers annoy me, and they carry whinge, bitch, and complain that they've got to pay more in taxes, they've got to pay rent, they've got to pay. That's not my problem. <laughs> no, don't. You know, if if you can't figure out a way to be more efficient and more effective, well, well, the only thing that you have to offer me is I walk in the store and you need to have good customer service to keep me there. If you don't have that, I'm not going to stay there and I'm going to go and buy it online for less. Mm. You know, and they've got to realize that they've got to stop blaming online stores for their demise. I'm pretty sure myself, well, I'm a tight ass and I'll do it. If I can go into a store and pay, you know, I might pay, you know, a few percent more, but that's fine. I expect to do that. I'm walking physically into a store. I'm playing with the product. I'm talking to the sales representative about the product. You know, I'm happy to pay a little bit more for it. But, you know, when you don't offer customer service, you don't have the product there half the time that you're using mm. anyway. Um, and you're, you know, three hundred percent dearer than I can buy it for it online. That's right. I'm uh, not the, going uh, to buy it there. Yeah, it's just not coming down to <laughs> like ten percent. It's coming down to a lot more. Uh, you know, the, the Jerry Harvey's been banning around GST free for stuff under a thousand dollars. I don't think that's going to be workable. Uh, it's just how it is. It's just how it is. So just either put up with it. But if you if you've got software and you're selling it, it would make sense just to put it on a server in Bali or somewhere, wouldn't it? 
Like that's all I would yeah, do it. Like, that's right. I, look, you, you still live in Australia. You're still paying Australian tax. You're still paying. You're still buying foodie. You're still buying water. You're still doing everything here. So you still support the mm. joint. So, that's what I, I mean, doing. didn't I don't know if it was Eric. Somebody a couple of weeks back was saying that economically, if we ditch everything, all our taxes, everything we have, and just have a twenty percent GST, we'd be better off. Say that again. You know, if we ditch all the taxes and everything that we have now, yeah. just have a 20% GST, yes. in the long run, it will work out cheaper. The cost of living will come down. All the yeah. actual yeah. end costs will come down. The amount of tax we pay you know, will come down, but everything will come down at sort of the same scale. So, But nothing works you know, like that. It, Remember when the GST came in, that was supposed to replace a lot of taxes. Uh, get rid of stamp duty, I think, was one of them. Uh, that didn't happen. <laughs> so, yeah, how'd that work? <laughs> so, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But but then, but then, the GST was brought in. Look, I think the GST was a good thing because it was a more user pays sort of a system. And especially like with sales tax, that was 22%, don't forget, Yeah, uh, the sales tax. So I mean, that's what I said. GST theoretically is a great idea. It's just been managed badly. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Well, how, but it can't, what do you mean though, managed badly? It can only be... a, a Applied and charged is that what you mean? Like when you have a goods and services, when you when you're already paying for a goods tax and a services tax, you can't have a goods tax say on cigarettes and then have a tax on cigarettes. <laughs> that's well, my that, point. You, yeah, that's right. And that's and and the the wine tax, whatever they call it, alcohol. The, the um, alcohol pop tax. Yeah, yeah. There's look. There's, yeah. yeah, there's just a lot. But anyway, anyway, stupid GST. I mean, and petrol, you know has like four war taxes on it. So mm. they've managed to put a war tax on it every time we've gone to war, but they've never actually managed to take one off. Mm. Yeah, that's right. But <laughs> but the GST, like, because I know I was, speak, I was talking, well, Skype and Eric through the week, and, you know, when I was uh, look, do, setting up all the all the hosting and domains and stuff on the hosting server, uh, and I was looking at the domains because you register them from a, from a place overseas, from a registrar overseas. This is the, just the domain, not the host, just the domain name. And you know you're not paying GST because they're overseas. So, so but then when you on sell them, so say will when you buy a domain name, well I've got to increase the price straight away by ten percent for GST. Mm. So say say the domain costs me uh, ten bucks, then instantly I've got to I, I resell. So it cost me ten. I have got to resell it or to make money to break even at eleven. Mm. And then so I've got to add more on. So instantly, the stuff that an Australian buys to resell, even though it comes from overseas, has to, is, is 10% more expensive for that reason. And that's why drop shipping is becoming so popular because they're not touching the product, so they're not reselling it. Mm. Yeah. They're, you're, they're buying a product directly from a wholesaler in China and the wholesaler is shipping it directly to you. Yeah, that's right. So... That's why drop shipping is starting to become so popular now. Mm. Well, there's got to be a there's going to be a better way. It's a global economy. There's going to be a global solution one of these days. We'll get Mark on the line. Uh, <laughs> now he'll, he'll know the answer. <laughs> Telstra has launched a Pocket 4G. Wow, the battery powered prepaid Wi-Fi 4G can connect up to mm-hmm. five Wi-Fi enabled gadgets to Telstra's 4G network simultaneously. The hotspot is available. For one hundred and sixty nine dollars with five gig, over thirty days, additional recharges can range from twenty dollars to a hundred dollars. That's probably uh, not too Glenn, bad. I think you're broken. Whoa! What happened? Where did I break? Hello. Hello. Oh, I broke like that. All right, we'll be back. Hello. Hello. What's happened? Will, can you hear me? I can't. I can't. I can, you sound like. You sound like a Dalek on LSD. Oh, I can't no. hear what you're saying. And the stream's gone. Hang on. Yeah, it's all gone for me too. Everything's gone. You're almost gone. Hang on, I'll stop the stream. And we'll start the stream again. Just stop it for a few seconds. Give us a check to clear. But how's my audio going? No, nah, not usable. Well, let me reload this Google page. I think I can do this. I don't think I'll lose you. I've done it before. I think you will, but I'll come back.
So we'll restart the stream. Okay, your audio has come good. Oh, this hasn't. This is still reloading. Well, am I back? Am I back? Join. Baby, come back. I did. I exploded. I, I, I spontaneously combusted. But thanks wow, for, there's two of you. Oh, <laughs> I've spontaneously combusted, <laughs> but I've, uh, I have returned in, in human put-together form. All right. Oh, how, there you go. You, yeah. you just left the chat. <laughs> <laughs> How's the audio now, Will? Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Oh, let's get back into it. Um, how long we got to go? We haven't got too long to go. Where's my mouse? Three minutes. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, well, about another ten minutes. A ten minute tease. I've got another couple. Just let me get another track here going. Do I have to tell it it's a stereo track? Jeez, that's useless. One of these days I might find out how to do that. Very choppy. Wing. That's not good. Do I have to tell it it's a stereo track? You must be out of bandwidth tonight. Why? The stream's choppy as. Well, so I just started doing it in the last 20 minutes. No, well, let me have a look. Uh, look let me just check my uh, Big Pond bandwidth allowance. I'm at the start of a month, so, geez, I bloody hope not. <laughs> Unless something crazy's been going on. Oh, Telstra's finally released a... I don't know if you can see that. Telus has finally released a usage meter for your mobile usage on your devices. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it iOS as well? Uh, I don't know. I know it's on Android. No, I'm not uploading. No way. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going all right. I'm not uploading. But um, look, we'll do a, do a quick speed test, see what's going on. Hey, eh? Let's see what's going on here. Bum, 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 bum. Change the hamster. You mean you mean we're supposed to get a hamster? Oh, it died. Where are we going to go? Using like naked mole rat or something. Aren't we? Brisbane, hosted by Telstra. You reckon that'd be the fastest? Ching. That's all right. Nine, and I'm uploading. <laughs> Nothing wrong here. What's your upload? Yeah, well, it'll probably be about two. Whoa, my download's working tonight. I tested before I went on, and it was like 10 meg. Now it's 89. Here we go. Yeah, seems all right. Two. Yeah, that's all right. Just checking my one, just in case. Shouldn't be mine, shouldn't make any difference, but I just want to check. Normally sometimes when the video goes a bit chop-chops, the CPU usage is up, but that's that's that seems all right. See, that's all right. My computer's still wigging out. It just randomly stops responding. There's no CPU usage, no hard drive activity, no nothing for like ten minutes, fifteen minutes, and then it comes good again. Well, that's no good. We've only got ten minutes to go, so let's keep going. All right. That's what I did last week. <laughs> oh, yeah, yuck. All right. Uh, let me see. Are we where are we? I've got to get another story. And well, I got, I got a couple of stories. Okay, cool. So we're doing the four G. So I think we finished with that, weren't we? Uh, um, I don't know. I couldn't hear you after you started that. I oh, was going right. to say I played with one of those tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll bloody keep. We'll go back. We'll go back. Just start with that story again, and then we can. Oh, I'll just leave me. it in there. I don't edit. I don't like editing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll go, oh, this key's going in the sleep mode too, the stupid thing. All right, and we'll go from there. And Yeah, so I just have to recap uh, just before that slight interruption there. So if you've heard it all before, well, deja vu. But Telstra launches Pocket 4G, the battery-powered prepaid Wi-Fi 4G, can connect up to five Wi-Fi-enabled gadgets to the 4G network, Telstra's, simultaneously. Uh, the hotspot is available $169 with 5 gig over 30 days, and you can reboot it for from $20 to $100. Will, you played with one today. 
Yeah, I did while I was sitting at the uh, Optus shop for not the Telstra store for some ridiculous length of time. Um, yeah, I, was, I had one there. I was having a bit of a, a play with that, and it uh, all good. It was, yeah, it was not decent range. So the biggest problem with a lot of the pocket Wi-Fi's is there's no range. Um, but it, I could pick it up probably. Now, bear in mind this is in a phone shop with four million phones. Um, and it was in the back of the store, and I could probably pick it up at the entrance to the shop opposite. So it was Not a good, bad. you know, yeah. 20, 15 metres or something in that sort of environment. So that's that's pretty good. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, look, look, I think that that's something like that. So 169 bucks with 5 gig. Yeah, I don't know what the smaller plans are or what the recharge plans are. But uh, look, that's not too bad. If you haven't got a 4G phone, like you, you can just, yeah, you just... I mean, in it's expensive some... compared. It's twice the price of three G because I think what's more than that because three G. Oh, hang on, that was that was the initial purchase, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but then there's the recharge. Is um, yeah. not sure, but I because mean, if you're after speed bad. and you've got a little three G phone, well, this could be the answer for probably maybe not too much more um, cashola. Uh, yeah, mm. so that's a good idea. I can see its uses. That'd be good. I can see its uses. Uh, yeah, Especially, as I said, for multiple devices, it's very handy, which is which is the thing, you know, on a normal 3G dongle, you're only going to get, you know, you start putting any more than two devices on it and it's unusable, it's so slow. But with the 4G, we did a speed test. I think there was five of us on it and um, we all, you know, had amazing results on speed tests. So, mm. Yeah, well, that's good. I'll tell you what we haven't done. We haven't done Garth tonight. Do you want to hear Garth or do you want to push him out till next week? We might push him out because it's right at the end of the show. Yeah, we'll kick him out. Um, <laughs> next week, Garth. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now, uh, did you have any more stories? I've got, a, I've got about two. Two left. Yeah, just a, a couple of quick ones. Um, nurses apparently now are complaining that they're seen as, um, as stupid sex objects according to YouTube, or according to nurses, YouTube is showing them as stupid sex objects. Um, basically, it carries on saying how their nurses have been urged to go on the offensive against YouTube, complain to YouTube, um, you know, and send takedown notices and, and things like that. Yeah. Now, some of them are from some of the shows, clips that were taken down, um, a couple were from cartoons, a couple were from Frasier, uh, there's a couple of commercials, things like that. Now, great. But did they not hear of, like, Carry On Nurse and yeah. you know, <laughs> Benny Hill? And, you know, like, I'm sure they were shown as stupid sex objects, objects yeah. far before YouTube had anything to do with it. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. But uh, yeah, I know. There's Benny Hill. They've always been. There's always nurse jokes, you know. And yeah, there's always been nurse jokes. I don't know. It's some. But speaking of YouTube, uh, it's they've, they've got a face blurring tool. They've launched the face face blurring tool now. So it said it said the function would be of use to activists wishing to share footage of protests involving participants who wanted to remain anonymous. Uh, it hinted other features would follow, describing the move as the first step towards providing visual anonymity. But it added that its code could not be guaranteed to work in all instances and other safeguards may be needed. So, look, that's probably a fair or a fair, fair thing, I suppose. I could probably see where that could come in handy, especially if you are an activist. I honestly can't see it being useful at all, given the fact that the people who want to remain anonymous and don't want their faces shown um, have been doing it for years quite successfully anyway. So, yeah. honestly... There's many more things they should be thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, and um, what have I got here? My last one here. Oh, what's this thing? I've never even heard of pe pedo bear. Has anyone ever? Oh, pedo bear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Has anyone heard of pedo bear? Too fair, Dinkum. But anyway, look, I'll yes. show you a picture of pedo bear. There's little pedo. There he is. <laughs> now. <laughs> Now, Nestle has been forced to take down an image from its KitKat Facebook fan page after it emerged it was similar to an icon to use to ward off pedophiles. So that's pedo, pedo really? bear. Yeah, I oh know. And this is the bear that they used. It's, yeah. One's a cartoon and one is just a man in a suit, in a bear suit. 
But yeah. the picture of the nut brown coloured bear, I would go on to say was was forced to have been taken down by nut jobs, was used briefly to promote Kit Kat bars on the Facebook page of, of Nestle's own chocolate bar. The company said it had no idea that the image matched that of Pedo Bear. Oh, God. Considered oh, visual really? shorthand on the internet for sites posting material with inappropriate overtones towards minors. Nestle Australia New Zealand confirmed. Hang on, let's see if I can get both of them on the screen at once. It's crazy, isn't it? Nestle in Australia... Nestle Australia New Zealand confirmed that it had produced the image but denied any knowledge of the pedophile-linked pedo bears. You know, of course. We produced a photo of a, of a real guy in a bear suit to launch Instagram through our Facebook community. The picture is not pedo bear. We've, heard of pet, we've never heard of pedo bear. But when the possibility of its similarity to the so-called pedo bear was raised with us, they took it down. So, pedo bear, you'll, you'll never... That's just pathetic. Oh, really look, I, look, obviously, I've never heard of it. Um, uh, even so, one's a cartoon. Oh, look, I think it's a bit silly. People get a bit precious. Not, not that I'm putting I mean, light on. Not that of pedo bear. You know, it's not not that uncommon. But like, yeah, look, I'm not making light of <laughs> of a serious um, situation. You know, but um, look, sometimes I think that just goes a bit too too crazy. It's a there crazy was, world. I crazy. mean, there's a, um, a, a vitamin company called Manatech do really good vitamins and stuff, and they used to have um, mana bears and mana gummies and things like that were their um, their brand names, and then mm. they somebody decided to change the the kids side of the the vitamins to peda because it means you know children or something in some language so suddenly they became peda bears and peda chews and things like that and then there was a huge outrage over that too yeah because <laughs> it's like it's a name it, it's a, yeah. it's like you know a podiatrist well, that's yeah. right. But oh, the, hang on. does he work on your feet or work on your kid? I can't remember. Yeah, I um, know. <laughs> yeah, look, I think <laughs> these things just go a bit crazy. But anyway, that's a crazy world out there. Uh, what else? Will, well, you got anything to finish up on? There's uh, just a, a couple of things. One is a, stat- a, st- bleh, a stat- statistic. Oh, that's a big oh, word. That's too late. It's past my bedtime. Um, and it basically, uh, I'll just do a, queen, a oh, screen <laughs> share as opposed to a queen share. Um, and this is about the the TSA, uh, some statistics that have come out over the last few years. You know, the TSA is the, this is basically the uh, anti-terrorism security oh, yeah. thing that America is paying ridiculous amounts of money for. Um, and so basically, since funding on 9th of the 11th, over 60, hang on, 60... Billion? Zero, 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 zero. What's nine zeros? Is that billion? Have to be. $60 billion has been spent on funding on the TSA. Did yet we... more than 20, 25,000 security breaches have been allowed through. The TSA has spent $36 million on devices that puff air onto travellers. And as of <laughs> when this was done, all 207 of them still sit in the warehouse. Oh. Um. Originally, you know, they had things like uh, 16,500 staff were originally supposed to be hired. They're up to 62,000. An average salary of $103,000 per person per year. Jeez. And an executive received $5.4 million for nine months worth of work. So this goes through, you know, all the way through basically saying that um, at least 16 individuals later accused of terrorist plots were had flown at least 23 different times prior to being, you know, and never got stopped on the, mm. the thing. So, you know, basically you can go to uh, floorgem.com and just search for uh, TSA and it'll bring up a list of, of how inept <laughs> they mm. are basically. Um, I just found it fascinating. You know, That's a lot I don't of agree with it what they're doing but regardless of whether you agree with it or not you read all these statistics you know and it just shows you basically it says here they spend it's got a comparison here they spend um 7.6 billion dollars for the tsa and 3.2 billion dollars on green energy per year mm. so 
they spend th- nearly three or well, two and a half times more looking out for terrorists. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So. Yeah, I don't know. I suppose that has to be done. But they've got. They've, I thought they got them all. They got Bin Laden. They got Saddam. Aren't, they? Aren't we done? S- Are we still going? Saddam insane and who, yeah. <laughs> was he in Sudan? Um, yeah. Hey. I said, was he in Sudan? Sudan in Sudan. I don't know, but it, it was insane. <laughs> he was. Um, <laughs> and there's just something that caught my attention uh, during the week, and they are from uh, vat19.com, who does some pretty neat um, fun things, basically. And they've pretty much got the world record now on the world's largest gummy worm. Oh, yeah. Um, you know your, you know your snakes and stuff. You get, um, you know, gummy lollies. snakes and gummy yeah. worms and things like that. Yeah, the lollies. Yeah, yeah. I'm just quickly fasting forward. Uh, screen share. Basically, they've come up with this one here. Oh God. Which is uh, 128 times larger <laughs> than a normal worm. It weighs three pounds. It measures 26 inches and has 4,000 calories. <laughs> wow. And he, he looks a bit how you're going too. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the other one they've also done is they've also released a 26-pound gummy bear. Oh, geez. Um, as long as it's not like one of the bears we were talking about before. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's... A 26 pound, so that's 13 kilo oh, God, gummy bag. Um, I'm just quickly skimming through this, see if I can find a picture of it. Where's the bit where they... And he's got a hollow belly, so you can actually put dips and stuff inside <laughs> his belly. Yeah, right, nice. <laughs> he weighs, um, yeah, 26 pounds. It's 32,000 calories. <laughs> yeah, but you wouldn't eat He's it all reusable, anyway. He's reusable, so you can wash him out and reuse him. Oh, oh, um, oh Has what? a one-year shelf life. Wow. <laughs> one litre serving bowl and uh, cost $150. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> what will so they I want of? one. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to sit on his belly. <laughs> oh, there's, you know, like... There's there's bits here. You get an idea of the size of them. I mean, look at that. There's yeah. there's two grown guys holding these. But wouldn't things. it be all sticky and stuff like that? <laughs> Apparently not. Apparently they they're pretty pretty resilient. Yeah, if right. they don't get hot, if they get hot, they melt. Obviously. I wonder if they if <laughs> they'd flatten if you chucked it out out of a high rise building. It would just go. <laughs> be just like a big blob. Yeah, yeah. good stuff. <laughs> I reckon that's awesome. <laughs> I want I want a gummy. I want to buy a gummy bear. And then one of the big gummy worms, so I can roll the worm up and stick it in his belly. Yeah, nice, nice. The, the gummy bear with worms. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All so right. just a bit of a, a bit of a light note to end the show on. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> All right, now it's uh, yeah. So it is the end of the show. End of episode two hundred ninety nine. Next week, yes. Oh, we a big three hundred show. Whoopie do. So uh, tune in. Make sure, <laughs> make sure you tune in. For that that sounds so excited. <laughs> 300. Well, that, what's that one a week? That represents a lot of shows. That's, I wonder how long that. I wonder how long we'd go for if you were to play back to back. Be a while. Uh, 300 hours, I guess. Be about that. So, what's 300 divided by 24? Let's have a look. Well, 10, 10, 10 days is 240. So, 12, what's that about? 14 days, 15 days. 12 and a half. So nearly a oh, fortnight. Yeah. You could nearly a fortnight. Put them on the radio. So <laughs> uh, back to back. We should play episode one as a bit of a uh, oh dear prequel just to see what it's like. <laughs> oh, those heady days of audio <laughs> problems. Oh, okay, nothing's changed. Oh, hang on. <laughs> I was going to say <laughs> six years and still got audio problems. The only difference is now we've got audio. And video problems. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, so until we see you next week, it's uh, emails is Glenn, Garth, Eric with a K, uh, or Will at aussietechheads.com.au. Don't forget uh, hosting.aussietechheads.com.au, video.aussietechheads.com.au. I should just say paper, video, hosting, <laughs> dot aussietechheads.com.au. And what else is there? Radio, if, hopefully. If you, uh, yeah, contact me if you want to uh, come on and have a chat. 
about anything. I know uh, I've got I've got a couple of people I've got to get back onto. I've been a bit slack, so if you're listening, guys, I'll get back to you this week and we'll get you on soon. Uh, all Twitter. right. Yeah, Twitter is Mr. T- Tompkinson for Will. Me is Aussie Techhead. Eric with the K is Eric Franco. And Garth is, once again, I don't know, Garth underscore hum. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have a look. Let me have a look. Hang While on. he's looking, look us up on uh, Facebook as well. Face- like us up on there. Like and, us a lot. And uh, YouTube, of course. Yes, yes, YouTube. So pretty much getting the, getting around, getting around everywhere. Let's have a look. Garth is... Oh, I've got to go into one of these. Hang on, Garth is... And if anybody wants a Britney Spears CD, we'll actually pay you $10 to have it. Oh, I couldn't get rid of it. I tried. <laughs> yeah, it's Garth underscore hum. I was right. But uh, yeah, look. <laughs> oh, look, yes, I was just. I'm giving it away now. Whoever wants it, we'll give you. We'll give you ten dollars to listen it on the proviso that you actually play it, listen to it, and send us a video. <laughs> I don't think anyone's gonna be bothered doing that. <laughs> <laughs> not for not for old Brit. No, well, look. I, I, I think um, we had a, we had a taker that wanted to put in the microwave, and uh, and film it. <laughs> But uh, no, no, could I send it off to Will at Blend? I guess. <laughs> no, I don't want to destroy it. It, it. You know, I'd rather give it to someone. <laughs> so uh, look, I can't get rid of it. So if you want it, <laughs> hurry up! Uh, all right, so <laughs> you're holding us up. You're holding the prize line up. All right, so <laughs> so uh, oh, don't forget the footy as well. The footy's still going strong. I might be leading. Uh, I'll have to have a look. We'll have a footy update next week too. I think it might be a bit of a bit more of a fun fun episode next week. Uh, all right, so that's about it, isn't it? I've said everything. Don't have to say anything else. Um, no. All's good. Get out. All's good. All right, Will. <laughs> Thanks, Will. We'll see you next week. All right, week. guys. Thanks, Lounge. See you later. Thanks, Lounge, once again for sticking in for the hour live. And thanks to the podcast listeners and YouTube watchers. So until next week, it's bye for now. Bye-bye. See ya. <laughs>